I'm Tracy Stutter with Discovery Channel. And I'm Matt Dinsko. And we're here at MIT to look at a robotic snail that can one day save your life in a disaster. Seriously, a robotic snail. Um, so we got interested in snails because um, we like to think of snails as sort of nature's ultimate all-terrain vehicle because they can climb over all different kinds of substrates. If you put them on the floor and they hit a wall, they'll go straight up the wall. When they hit the ceiling, they'll climb across the ceiling. Um, so we wanted to build a robot that has the same kind of versatility that snails have. The trick that the snail pulls is that it has a special kind of slime that it uses to stick itself mm. to whatever substrate it's crawling on. <laughs> okay. And the, the slime has some magical characteristics. Yeah. Yes, yes, so the magical characteristic that the slime has is that it has something called a finite yield stress. Um, and a finite yield stress fluid is one where you have to stir it or push on the fluid in some way in order to get it to flow. So an example of a finite yield stress fluid is mayonnaise. So, um, so we had to figure out uh, what kinds of fluids had the same sorts of properties. Um, and we ended up using something called carbopol gel. Um, and carbopol is the same stuff that they put in hair gel. So you can see, so, yeah. So it's got that kind of um, sticky feel to it, and uh, and it actually works really well for the crawler. By using the slime, the robo snail is able to climb over all different types of surfaces by only moving one of its six pads at a time, allowing the other five pads to remain securely in place. The robo snail smears the slime as it moves one of its pads forward. Then each remaining pad does the same. Slowly but surely, the snail is able to move. So what's in store for robo snails? The two places where robots like this come up a lot where you really need the versatility are search and rescue and medical devices. And the search and rescue being mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a terrain maybe where there's, a, there's been a disaster. Exactly. Buildings exactly. are so buildings are So there's rubble, there's small holes you have to go through, there's um, unpredictable terrain you have to go around. But when used as a medical device, those small holes may be smaller than you would think. The soy envisions robo snails one day crawling around in people's bodies during invasive surgeries. Yeah, so so um, so if you were going to use these as as medical devices for something like minimally invasive surgery, you either have to find a biocompatible material for the slime, mm -hmm. or um, it turns out that inside our bodies we have a lot of a lot of the surfaces are coated in mucus, and mucus is basically what the snails use, right? So you could in fact use the body's natural fluids hmm. um, to have this thing crawl around inside. You may not see them crawling around in your body just yet, but we could be seeing robo snails sooner than later. Yes, yeah, so as far as when this will be employed, um, we recently got some new funding from DARPA. Um, and so, you know, that's at the stage where they want it in the next few years, I think, where they can actually use it for military applications. For Discovery News, I'm Matt Danzico, and that is a robotic snail.